Welcome to a new video about analog filter design. In this example, we will discuss the Butterbrook Response Low Pass Filter Design. It will be using the cell and key filter configuration. We will see shortly how we can do that. Of course, we will step by step work out the calculations and verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, our design objective is Butterbrook Response Active Low Pass Filter. It should use a cell and key filter configuration. And we also need to calculate the actual stop and attenuation. This will be clear shortly how we need to do that. The specifications are the following. We need to have a maximum pass band ripple given by this symbol Amax 1.5 dB. The minimum stop and attenuation we require is 16 dB. And we have the cutoff frequency of 500 Hz. And we have the stop band frequency of 2 kHz. So that means actually the following. At this frequency, 2 kHz, we need to have at minimum 16 dB attenuation. Of course, more is better, but this is what we require a minimum. So how do we work this out? Let's see the calculations first in our solutions. We start by using the formulas in order to determine the required filter order. That's actually our step one. So we need to first scale these A max and A minimums to the epsilon p, which is related to that A max. And that's then given by this formula. And when you substitute here 1.5 dB, you get here 0 0.6423. In a similar case, you do this for the epsilon s, which is related to that A minimum. So A minimum is here 16. You substitute the value here and you get here 6.2298. And now we'll take these two values and use a formula for determining the filter order. And that is given by this expression. We have here the log of the ratios of epsilon s and epsilon p. And we also have the ratio of the stop end frequency and the cutoff frequency. So we just substitute here the values and we get here 1.6389. Now, in order to actually realize our circuit, we need to have an integer value. So our first order will be not sufficient. So we need to go to the second order. Order. So that means we need to have an N is 2. So for this design, we need to use a cell and key filter configuration. That means for the realization, we need to use a two pole. That means a second order cell and key low pass filter circuit. And that is now given by this circuit. You see here the unity gain feedback operational amplifier. And we have two resistors R1 and R2 and two capacitors C1 and C2. We will see shortly how we can determine the values by using the Butterworth response table. Now, the next step, step two, that is what we need to do now, is the calculation of the component values. So, by setting these two resistors exactly the same, so just, for example, 1 kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm, depending on the specification, like the power or noise, and in this case, there's not a specification, so just select here 1 kilo ohm. Then we need to calculate what's called a scaling factor. So, that is called now a C, which is not a capacitor necessarily, but just a scaling. And that is given by 1 over R the omega c and we omega c here is of course 2 pi times this fc and when you do that we have then 1 over now the r is already selected that is 1000 2 pi times 500 which is our cutoff frequency and you get here 3.1831 times 10 to the power of minus 7 and this is a very important parameter or a value we will use now in order to calculate the c1 and the c2 so for that, we also need to use the Butterworth response table. This is also uh, valid for different responses like the Chepichev and the Bessel response filters. So we need to use this in this case. And looking at this table and looking at the order, we need to have the second order. We see that we have number of seconds, which is just one. And the sections we will use is two pole. That's actually also given as information in this table. Well, we also see, so there is more information. Let me also clarify this. We see here a ratio C1 over C and then C2 over C and of course also this C3 over C. This is the first part we will use for low pass design. This part is used for the high pass filter design. That is where we use this in another video where we also discussed the Butterworth response active high pass filter design. Now it says the following. You need to have a C1 over C which is the, your scaling factor. That ratio must be 1.414. This is actually exactly square root of 2, just an approximation here. And this will be C2 over C. That should be then 0 0.7071, which is actually the square root of a half. So we will use that, these values, and we just 
re rewrite that so we have the c1 is equal to 1.414 times the c which is then actually our scaling factor so if you rewrite this you get to this expression similar for the c2 then you have this expression so we are actually almost done we just substitute here this c our scaling factor that means 1.414 times this 3.1831 times 10 to the power minus 7 you get here almost 450 nanofarads in a similar form we have here almost 225 nanofarads so we have actually calculated now the c1 and the c2 and we have selected the r1 and r2 to be exactly the same and that will allow us to calculate the c1 and c2 using this butterworth response table now next actually now the design is completed so we know the component values so we can just build it now the situation is calculate also the actual stock band attenuation because we need it to have 16 dB minimum. Do we also reach that value? Now for that we need to first calculate the pass band frequency. That is a frequency very important that also mentions where you get that attenuation of 1.5 dB here. So that frequency is calculated using this formula. So you see again that epsilon p is appearing and also the order n. And this cutoff frequency we have given. So 500 times this 0 0.6423, which is actually from here. And to the power 1 over n, which is then 1 over 2. And that will give us approximately 400 hertz. Okay, now that is, as said, the frequency where the gain is minus a max. So we go down from 0 dB because it is a unity gain feedback. So the gain is at low frequencies 1 or 0 dB. You lower your gain to minus 1.5 dB at that frequency. We will see that shortly in the simulations also. Now we can calculate now the actual stop band attenuation that is then done by this formula. You see here the epsilon p again, the stop band frequency, the pass band frequency just calculated and again the order. Now what we get? We get now the following, just substitute here the values, we get now here 24.1 dB. Minimum we need to have a 16 dB. So this is way way above that value so this is indeed sufficient. There is also another way to calculate the A minimum. So we can then use the cutoff frequency right away. That is actually more convenient for this situation. So we can use this formula also much easier. So you don't have to go to the FP, which is the pass band frequency. So you just substitute here the stop band frequency, cutoff frequency, and also your order, and then you're actually done. And that's the exact same result you see here also, 24.1. So the, the change is that you don't use this 400.7 Hertz and this epsilon, but you only use your cutoff frequency. Okay, we have our component values, we have our results for the A minimum and the pass frequencies. Let's now go to the simulation result and check our calculations. Here is the body plot. You see also the circuit in the SPI simulator. And these are the values we just determined. These are the selected resistors R1 and R2 capacitors we just calculated and also the pass frequency, the A minimum we have achieved at that frequency of 2 kilohertz. Let's go one by one. We have a low frequency gain of 0 dB, as we know, because this is a unit gain feedback, so the gain is 1 or 0 dB for low frequencies. The gain is minus 1.5 dB at that frequency, which is indeed the pass band frequency, so that is also correct. You see that the gain is minus 3.01 dB, so it's actually going down by this much. At 500 Hz, that is actually also the characteristic of a cutoff frequency, that is also correct. Now, the final one, the label here, what you see here is the gain is here minus 24.098, so almost minus 24.1 dB at 2 kilohertz, which is what we actually also have calculated. And again, this is sufficient to fulfill this minimum requirement of this stop band attenuation. So we can say we have reached and met our specifications for this example. All right, it was our example considering the better response active low pass filter design using the specifications for this situation with the cutoff frequency, the stop band frequency and also the pass metal ripple and the minimum stop band attenuation. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know in the comments section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.